Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on transfer of analytical methods and procedures, FTA requirements, and strategies and tools for implementation. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host for today's session. And on behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I'd like to thank you all for being part of today's webinar. Today's webinar is being presented by Dr. Ludwig Huber. A few words about Dr. Huber before we begin today's session. Dr. Huber holds a PhD and also is a director of lab compliance and also a chief advisor for global FDA compliance at Agile and Technologies. And Dr. Huber is also an editor of lab compliance and the global online resource for validation and compliance issues for laboratories. And he's also an author of the books Validation and Qualification in Analytical Laboratories and Validation of Computerized Analytical and Network Systems in Former Healthcare. And we are honored to have Dr. Huber with us today to present today's webinar. Before we start off, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to quickly outline today's program. This webinar is for a 75-minute duration first. Dr. Huber will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas he would cover, and then share with you his presentation. And also would like to inform all our participants today that once part of today's teleconference, you've been placed on mute and would remain so until the Q&A begins. We have a couple of minutes at the end for your question and answers, but if you do come up with questions, ladies and gentlemen, please post your questions in the Q&A panel or the chat messenger, and we can get to them at the end for your question and answers. And for any reason, if you do get logged out of today's session, please follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we're all ready, I request Dr. Huber to take it from here. Dr. Huber? Yeah, thank you very much, Michael, for introducing me, and welcome everybody joining us today. This presentation is about the transfer of analytical methods and procedures according to FDA and international requirements, where the focus will be on controlled and documented transfers. The seminar should give you a good understanding of both the FDA, USP, and also international requirements. And in addition, I will give you strategies for implementation, and I also want to make you familiar with reference materials that should help you to easily implement what you have learned today. This slide gives an overview of uh, on today's seminar, and I will start with FDA requirements, USP requirements, guidelines, and enforcement practices. I will then talk about details of the USP chapter with different options for controlled transfer. The most important part of the seminar will be to discuss a strategy and a plan for a protocol for the transfer. The transfer plan should also define responsibilities for the sending and the receiving laboratories, so we will talk about them. Then after slide 20, then I will have also a questions and answer session at the at the end. If you have any question, you can send the chat. You can send you can send them through the chat or you can uh, later on ask the questions live by audio. Okay, in the second part of the presentation, we will talk about the transfer process, about comparative testing also, and I think a very important is also to discuss a question, what happens if we cannot meet the acceptance criteria in the receiving laboratory? And finally, we talk about the method transfer report. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to, to send them, to write them in the chat, which makes a lot of sense because uh, then we can uh, sort and pick the priorities. But uh, as I said, we also will have the possibility to answer questions at the end live through the audio line. Okay, as always, uh, when I give presentations like this, uh, I'm not only presenting slides, I also give you some reference material that will help you to easily implement what you have learned today. So, for example, there is a, a master plan here, a, 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 a method transfer master plan, which talks about the, uh, the scope of the plan, the, of the procedure, step by step. Then there are also some SOPs. There is one on transfer of analytical methods. 
which is definitely the most important document for today, for today's presentation. And there is also one which is similar, which is verification of compendial method. And we have a checklist, transfer of analytical method. We also have templates on transfer of analytical methods on how to, on how to document it. And there is also an example, a checklist for laboratory audits. Okay, and we also have a couple of FDA warning letters. Uh, they will tell you FDA's findings. They will tell you what mistakes other companies made, uh, so you can avoid them. So here is a link. Uh, you just can double-click on it if you, because I did already put this link on the uh, on the uh, in the chat room. Uh, so it's hyperlink. So you just can double-click on it, and I think the uh, audio. The, the, User ID and passwords you don't have to enter. I think they can come. They come up automatically. If not, just enter as a user ID, audio, and as, as a password AM4921. And in case the uh, the, uh, the the for anybody uh, listening to the recorded version later on, I put an expiration date here on, uh, which is sept September 30. But no problem if you will uh, try to get it later on. Just send an email and I will upload it for you for some time. So this is very important here. So now the next topic, uh, next slide will discuss, uh, it will give you some examples where a controlled method transfer is necessary, which is required. Uh, for example, they include the transfer of methods from a pharmaceutical company to the regulatory agency because the agency sometimes they ask for samples, and they when they when they analyze the samples, they don't need to, they don't want to, to to develop the method even less validate. Uh, so if you just would like to get uh, information on how to transfer the method and what to do, they make to, to make sure that they can run the method suitably in their in their own laboratory. Also, another example would be a transfer method from a sponsor company to contract lab or vice versa. Also, from an analytical development laboratory to quality control laboratories, maybe this could be, I think this could be the most important example here. Then we also can, a pharmaceutical company can uh, transfer the uh, methods that cross different sites. Uh, maybe the lab conditions could be slightly different or could be, could be, could be the same. Uh, methods can may also be transferred to new instruments, for example, to instruments with new technology. So an example would be when a standard column HPLC is replaced by UHPLC, so we can talk a little bit about it, or to instruments with different specifications. Sometimes suppliers of chemicals also transfer the method for testing with a client. And uh, so this is also important because then the user of the chemicals does not have to develop and validate the method. Just use the transfer protocol, which definitely is much simpler, much easier to do, as I hope I can demonstrate during this presentation and also showing the examples here. Okay, this slide shows the definition of the transfer of analytical procedures according to USP 1224. Most important here are the words documented process, and the process should ensure that the receiving unit, the receiving unit has the procedural knowledge and the ability to perform the transfer analytical procedure as intended. But on the other hand, no matter what the definition is, the important point here is that the receiving laboratory should be, must be qualified to use the transfer method in that the laboratory can consistently consistently get the same results as a transferring laboratory. I mean, that's basically the most important point here. Consistently get the same results as in the transferring laboratory. This slide here gives a reason, gives reasons why we should pay attention to controlled method transfers. There are two reasons. Number one is uh, to comply with regulations, and equally important is to reduce failure rates or to improve the quality of analytical test results, uh, to reduce or eliminate the, uh, the out-of-specification test results based on inappropriately transferred methods. This is also important. The, ma the main reason why transferred methods cause problems is that the laboratory the receiving laboratory may have different equipment, the analyst with different skills, for example, or maybe the environment may be different, and also the work practices may be different. I mean, this all can happen. 
So this is why we need to test all the things. Also, training is very important here. That the analysts uh, in the receiving lab are equally well trained as the ones in the transferring laboratory. This slide uh, shows the uh, FDA regulation. Uh, validation of analytical methods is required by various FDA regulations and for 